Is the following set of vectors B a basis for R3? So we have our three vectors, we'll call them V1, V2, and V3. I want to check if we have a basis. Now, to be a basis, we're going to need two things. First, we're going to have to have that our set is spanning. So that means if you take any vector in R3, we're going to be able to write that vector as a linear combination of the elements in B. Then, we're going to want linearly independent. So if we have linearly independent, that's going to mean if we take any vector, write as a linear combination using spanning, then that linear combination is going to be unique. We have two methods to see whether we have a basis or not. So for our first method, we're just going to put our vectors into a matrix A, then we're going to go to row echelon form. And then from there, we could take a look at the pivots, and that'll determine whether we have our two properties or not. So we load into a matrix A, A is going to look like this. So we're going to go to row echelon form. So we're going to perform row operations. Okay, we have a one here, so that's good. Zero here, then we want a zero here. So to turn that minus two into a zero, we're going to take twice row one, add it to row three. When I do that, what you'll note is row two and row three are going to be equal. So I can cancel off row three, just make it a row of zeros. They'll divide row two by a two, just so that we have our two pivots. That's going to be my row echelon form. And then you note what's going to happen. Not going to be linearly independent. To get that, we would have to have a pivot in each column. So that's not happening. So that's going to mean we're linearly dependent. And somewhere, there's going to be a relation between v1, v2, and v3. So if you play around a little bit, you'll see that there's going to be a relation v1 equals 5 ninths v2 plus 2 ninths v3. So you should check that. Another way to go, we'll see that we're not spanning. So if I take a set of vectors, put them into a matrix, I want to find a basis for the span. We go to row echelon form, and our span is going to be formed by just taking the original columns that go with our new pivot columns. So if I want a basis for the span of our three vectors, I'm just going to use the first two because we're going to have a pivot in column one and column two. And then we'll want to go for the original columns. So span of our three vectors is going to look like this. And then you'll note, OK, if I have two vectors, that's not going to be enough to span our three. OK, if you want, check that concretely. Pick a favorite vector that you don't think is going to be in that span. So I don't think 1, 0, 0 is in the span. So I'll write as a linear combination. Now. You'll note here, if I want to solve this, the only way I can get a zero in the second term here is if b is equal to zero. And that's going to cause problems, because then you'll note the only way I can get a zero in my third entry is if a is zero, but then there's no way I can get a one there. So one, zero, zero is not going to be in the span of these two vectors. Now, since I don't have either of these, it can't be a basis. So just checking one of these is going to get you to your not a basis answer. Alternative method, okay? We have three vectors checking for a basis of three space. So we'll load them into a matrix, and then all we need to do is check the determinant. So if we're looking for a pivot in each column, we'll have that if the determinant is non-zero. If I take the determinant of our matrix A, where I put our vectors in as the columns, what comes out? Well now, since I have a three by three, I can use my rule where we multiply down three diagonals, subtract off the other three diagonals, what comes out here is going to be a zero. So that means our three vectors are going to be linearly dependent, and we don't have a basis.